Dr. Widmeyer. Thanks, Chairman Flink. Um, ranking members, members of the committee, I want to thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony for the record of this hearing. My name is George Widemeyer. I'm a professor at Colorado State University, and I'm the chairman of the scientific board for the Kenya-based organization Save the Elephants. I've been studying a population of elephants in northern Kenya for 18 years, witnessing ivory poaching hit elephants I know individually. I'd like to begin by summarizing our current scientific knowledge on elephant poaching. Last September, I led with colleagues a peer-reviewed paper that used surveys of, of elephant carcasses across Africa to estimate the poaching of 100,000 elephants in the three years between 2010 and 2012. I updated this analysis for this hearing, finding poaching rates in 2013 and 14 continued to exceed natural growth rates for elephants, indicating the species has been in a poaching-driven decline for the last five years. Paul Allen's Great Elephant Census of Savannah Populations uncovered massive losses in Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe. Tanzania alone has lost over 50,000 elephants since uh, 2009. That's a 60% decline in that country's elephants. Um, the Wildlife Conservation Society documented a 62% decline in forest elephants between 2002 and 2011, and that decline continues. The Elephant Trade Information System documented the highest volumes of seized ivory ever recorded in 2013. Much of this ivory is tra trafficked out of two ports, Mombasa, Kenya, and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Scientific outputs have identified the problem sites. We now need serious action to address them. While these numbers are grim, it's important to recognize that the slaughter of elephants is not happening everywhere. We are seeing successes on the ground. I want to highlight our experience in northern Kenya, where a community conservation model called the Northern Rangeland Trust supported by USAID and in collaboration with Lewa Conservancy and Save the Elephants, has helped stop the poaching surge. Information from the communities and partner organizations have been critical in catalyzing effective policing actions by the Kenya Wildlife Service. The success is occurring in a remote, poorly policed region, awash in illegal small arms with few governmentally protected areas, an area with significant conservation challenges. Four te fundamental tenets for successful community conservation can be drawn from this project. The first is good governance models, which, uh, which are built through community-led decision-making with external oversights. The second is effective incentive models that get to the fundamental needs of the community. In our case, this was enhancing security to bring peace between different ethnic groups rather than a purely economic model. The third is land use planning to ensure long-term conservation viability. And the fourth is effective policing. Which, is, which in our case has been enhanced through these novel lines of intelligence provided by the community. Um, but ultimately, the policing was conducted by official enforcement agents making targeted and effective interdictions. Conditions that facilitate poaching and wildlife trafficking vary by country and sites within countries across Africa. There is not a single prescription that can solve the issue of wildlife poaching in Africa. So uh, I, I had ended, I gave some tenants, some core tenants to the community conservation programs that we're working closely with in Kenya. Um, and I, uh, I stopped at the point where I was talking about how conditions that facilitate poaching and wildlife trafficking vary by country and sites across Africa. Um, and that there is not a single prescription that can solve the issue of wildlife poaching in Africa. Um, funding targeted projects with implementing partners that are deeply knowledgeable and experienced in threatened areas is the model of Save the Elephant's Elephant Crisis Fund, a tactical program seeing successes on the ground in a diversity of contexts. I've attached our, um, our quarterly or our annual summary to my uh, testimony so that as an as informant information base for you guys to look at the different programs we're engaged with. There's quite a diverse portfolio in that. Um, this is also the model that U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Species Conservation Fund, a program widely seen as offering one of the greatest returns on investment. Increasing funding to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Elephant Conservation Fund is a mechanism for immediate impact on the elephant crisis. The U.S. government plays a critical role in addressing elephant poaching, and U.S. funding, particularly by USAID and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, is the foundation of many successful projects. But there are other agencies that can contribute substan substantively as well. The DEA has a blueprint for successfully combating criminal networks in Africa. The Department of Defense Counter Threats Office and the Treasury Department are experienced in disrupting criminal networks, expertise that could be highly effective in disrupting wildlife trafficking syndicates. The White House Executive Order on Wildlife Trafficking has been critical to bring concerted action by the U.S. government, but direct appropriations can ensure application of relevant expertise and experience to illegal wildlife trade. 
Ultimately, it's critical to enhance U.S. support of projects focused on population protection, judicial oversight and reform in source nations, and specialized criminal investigative units. Finally, the most obvious game changer to end ivory poaching would be a ban on domestic ivory trade by China. Chinese rhetoric suggests that a domestic trade ban by the U.S. may be the most likely action to catalyze this. We have reached the point where collectively we know how to effectively combat wildlife crime. This is a winnable battle. It's time to take action to dismantle the illegal trade networks and build the wildlife sector in Africa as a foundation for rural development. Thank you, Chairman Flank and distinguished members of the committee. I look forward to answering any questions you might have.